preset sounds pretty pretty sick. So that's uh, I set that up ages ago. That's the octave funk. <laughs> with these presets I will save them and export them so you can download them for free on my website
sweaty in this studio. Hey, Phil. Yeah, no worries, man. I'm just uh, having some fun creating some presets. Not expecting uh, lots of people to be up this early. Always really surprised how wicked this amp sounds for ridiculous money. Jesus Christ, I am dying. It's not even that hot today. Hey, Peter, how you doing, man? I bet it's hot in Australia. <laughs> it's Gerardo from Guatemala in Central America. How you doing, man? Um, so any of these presets I've got here, so the Carl Clean. Uh, I've wor I worked on these recently. I'm going to save them after this live stream and you can download them for free. Here's the overdrive. There's quite a lot of overdrive on that. You can probably back off the game. What time are you on then, Peter, in Australia and in Guatemala, Stuardo? You can get quite a nice clean sound if you back up on this. work on a really cool um oh god 3 58 a.m you're up late <laughs> or early should i say 8 p.m that's more like it say my um, brother in is it my brother-in-law lives in australia i should know the times <laughs> talk the funk I was watching um, some funk stuff with uh, Guthrie Govan, and I don't know, wherever I see him do this, it's, I think it's 30 second notes, not like triplets, and it sounds like the uh, Fox theme tune. And that's how I kind of try to get the funk thing going. <laughs> Sounds like a wobble. Should have put a bloody towel in the studio, Jesus. But yeah, all four of these presets I'll make sure I save. 6 p.m. Ah. I'm just going to get my uh, single coil guitar quickly. And I've got the... Uh, let's get my microphone off the guitar. 
uh, can you still hear me? Let's put that on there. Let's get some single coil action. So one thing I should have in my studio is a towel, sweat towel. <laughs> or just some aircon. <laughs> this guitar doesn't stay in tune because these strings are old, but get some single coil action going. I do love these Shergold guitars. Where's the delay? Here we go. No, that's not the setting. How do you play Can't Stop Red Chili Peppers? Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, this is something actually take off that delay. Because I think that it's double tracked, the original one. So it's got that kind of... If you want to get that rhythm going, and it's all about muting all the other strings, <laughs> that's swung. It's kind of getting used to muting all the strings. <laughs> you can tell I've been swinging way too much music. I'll have to revisit that because I wouldn't usually do that, I'd just be... Because I've been doing a lot of shred stuff, my fingers all want to do different things now to stay in position. That's the uh, fusion, fusion style kind of fingering. <laughs> but yeah, he's one of the reasons I started playing guitar. I think it was that, um, that lick that I used that... Uh... You can come in if you want. Abby, so loud. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Here we go, Abby. <laughs> Things you've got to do. This is a really nice, really nice tone, actually. Um, yes. Oh, no, you don't want to have that. And then, I don't know, I'm going to do this with all my lap. But, uh, and say hello to everyone. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh. 
careful and take her down. I didn't realize she's half naked. Trying to potty train my daughter at the moment, so. Carl, do you know an altar bridge? Open your eyes, sir. To be honest with you, I haven't really learnt um, any other band stuff at the moment. I'm just kind of working on my technique and just learning a lot of theory and things. And it's kind of like blowing my mind, like learning so much theory. Like I've been um, getting into uh, getting into harmonic minor, and without me realizing, I'm getting into well, Yingve or Malstein, Malstein, I can't say his name, territory. But I don't listen to him. But I'm kind of falling in that kind of territory. Whenever you play kind of diminished stuff. I find like uh, I end up spending hours working on like uh, just diminished stuff, like so the triads, uh, all the arpeggios, so. and then connecting them, and it's endless because it's all it's in minor thirds, so you can just move all the shapes up in in minor thirds, and you can have fun doing things like this. So yeah, sorry, I've gone off on a tangent, but. Yeah, I don't really learn solos anymore. I've just been getting into theory and improving my guitar technique and it's made me a hundred times more creative. I can just pick up the guitar like what was I doing earlier. I wouldn't be able to have done this before where you can just, I can just jam licks and riffs and I'm trying different rhythms like. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm making these riffs up on the spot which is really cool because I'm understanding where I can go with the theory. I know that things work and things don't. Triplets. It makes it fun just jamming, which I never used to have fun jamming because I never had the ideas. I'd always play Guns N' Roses stuff, but now I pick up the guitar, I don't need to learn necessarily something. I'll create something new myself. But yeah, I don't really, but Alter Bridge are awesome and one of my favourite bands. Both, uh, both guitarists are incredible, of course. I know that um, Miles taught Slash a few things, didn't he, in terms of um, Slash is quite old-fashioned with his power chords and that thing about having your the fifth in the lower E string to fatten it up. And I think <laughs> Slash has incorporated that in some of his songs now, which is cool. Because obviously Miles is quite a heavy player compared to what Slash does in his band. It's kind of old-fashioned rock, isn't it? Or classic kind of rock style. With a heavy edge. <clears throat> Let's uh, mess around with this one and call this something different. Hey Elliot, how you doing mate? How are you? <laughs> hey Josh B. I've not really done much uh, tone chasing, I've been mostly jamming. So this video was for Josh. He requested it. I can't remember what you requested, Josh, in terms of what you wanted me to do. I think it was dialing a tone with this, but um, it's crazy with uh, the Boss Katana stuff. I've only got, I've got the Boss Katana 50. Uh, this was the original one. I know there's a, a, a V2 or whatever it's called, um, but all of my presets should work on this one and the new one. I think that if you do presets on the new one, they don't work on this old one, which is why I've not bothered upgrading, because 
that annoys me of companies. Can't you just make everything work with all your gear, but then you don't spend more money buying more stuff. It's like iPhones. A lot of these companies are gonna have to change their approach because obviously there's lots of environmental factors that involve things now. You've got to make sure gear like phones and things last for a long time instead of making your customers buy a new phone every two months because it's just destroying the environment. <laughs> Right, so how do I re... I haven't, used, I haven't used this software in a while, so let's call this blank <laughs> for now. And what are we going to create? I don't know. Let's get... I'm going to get back my other guitar because this is uh, the single coils. Is there anything you guys want me to create? Maybe, oh, was, have, have I missed the point about someone creating? Um, exactly what I was looking for. What are your thoughts on how Katana sounds compared to your other favorite amps? Um, I kind of see the Katana as uh, similar to the way I, I view my plugins. So I really like the Saldano Slow 100 plugin and that. They're just convenient. Well, this is not as convenient, to be honest. So I find the plugins obviously more convenient. You plug your guitar into your interface and you can play, but they sound great for the money. It sounds pretty amazing. And the fact that you have all of these different pedals in an amp and you can save obviously all your presets. You've got a gigging amp in one thing. If you're, I love the sound of, you can't see it. I love the sound of these amps. I don't think you can beat the feel of a, a real valve amp, but um, obviously then you've got to buy pedals. That's like, what, a two grand setup there, plus pedals, you're upwards to three, 4,000 pounds, aren't you really? Whereas I think I paid 250 for a Boss Katana, and I wish I had this when I was younger, because I remember when I was a kid, I had, um, a park amplifier so that was uh, uh the say that was by marshall i think marshall created them and it's terrible there was like i think there was two i don't think there was even two channels and it does affect your the tone affects the way you learn and play so if i had this amp i would progress a lot faster so having a good amp helps and if a young kid can only afford this this is the best thing to buy because you've got all your effects you don't have to spend silly money and all your different effects pedals are all in here aren't they and they sound pretty damn good you can dial in some pretty great tones i think personally uh, let's put this back up again but um yeah a lot of the time i just use this when i was uh, creating some of my videos <laughs> I do love the simplicity, clean, crunch, lead, brown. And when I was a kid, all I would do was just go brown tone or just crank the uh, gain, not understanding, obviously, like if you want to get some more tone, it's, I think like turning the gain up, you think you kind of make up for bad technique, which I definitely did anyway. Whereas now I'm trying to get as less gain as possible. I've actually ordered, um, the Ibanez Tube Screamer to put in front of this amp and maybe my Fender amp, just so I can get a, push the amp a bit more. So push it to the edge of breakup and kind of get that Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of compressed sound, um, which I'm really excited about. But I'll be interested to see what you do if you put that in front of this amp. But yeah, I do love this. It's kind of been sat on the side just because you've got to have quite a long USB cable to your computer. So my computer is obviously where you guys are here. And then my um, Boss Katana's all the way over there. And if you use those uh, USB extenders, it doesn't pick it up on the computer, which is really frustrating. But one thing I will recommend if you haven't is checking out the uh, Air Step Cat if you've got a Boss Katana, because that's an amazing foot switch for that. I did a video about it a while ago, but it's a bit of a game changer. You can connect it to your iPad as well. It has Bluetooth, so you can, if you do a live gig, you can change all your Boss Katana settings directly without having to get a computer out, which is quite crazy. But it's all, that's all explained in another video. Maybe I'll link that in the description.
Hey Eric, how you doing man? Great job in this. I'm playing with the GT1 processor through front of my guitar MP. You're just building cool patches, start making some songs. Awesome app, thanks. No problem, Eric. Need an active USB cable. Ah, okay. Elliot's the man. He knows his stuff about all this. Um, how's your... Um, did you make like a whole outfit? Like a freaking awesome... Uh, what's the superhero outfit you made? You slowly built with your machine. It's crazy. Could you dial it in general brown tone and try and make it sound as good for your own ears as would use your sono to push the dials? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Uh, so let's go brown tone. So I've got uh, Seymour Duncan's in this guitar. Uh, it's a humbucker. So obviously if you're having, uh, if you've got single coils, it will give you a slightly different sound. So let's start with everything at 12 o'clock in terms of the bass, middle and treble. And let's turn off all of this. Just while we start. So let's try. <laughs> That's the thing, like what I love about this, um, this amp is like, What's that? 12 o'clock pretty much for everything. And we're sounding pretty good. One thing that I was told, I can't remember if it's the volume here, this one that I'm moving, or it is the main overall volume, but I think you're supposed to crank this to really get a good sound. But the issue is I'm plugged into my um, interface. So on your computer, if you download my presets, I recommend cranking that. Uh, and then saving the preset I've, I've given you and then control with the main volume, the amp. But oh yes, Iron Man made a Team Rocket costume for the last. What's it called you used? Oh, sorry, I'm so used with technology. But that to me is already. Pff. Big chords are sounding sick. And I, by the way, I've got um, a beat buddy down here so, so I can show you some tones as well. So, this is how it sounds in the mix. For me, you don't really want to push the gain on the brown tone all the way. <laughs> Let's have a listen. But... Hey, good morning. <laughs> Got too much gain. Let's try. Let's try about 30. <laughs> There's something like what I, what I search for, like the brown tone, is that like I can still riff and it'd be good for a solo kind of sound. <laughs> to me, that's pretty good, even quite low gain. What was it? No. Um, good morning, afternoon, or evening. It's morning for me, and uh, same to you, my friend. What time are you on? The 3D printer, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys reckon then? So, this is zero. 30, I quite like 30. And then 50 was quite hefty, but then we're... So the best chord to test things is a uh, E major. Then all the way. Maybe 40 is quite good, really. I'm 
I'm going to push the bass slightly. <laughs> Take off the treble slightly. Right, let's sort out the reverb next. I quite like those settings, so maybe the mids down a little bit. The Beat Buddy seems worth their weight in gold, more organic than MIDI and plugins. Yeah, I think the fact you can kind of hit a pedal. I'll tell you what, let me um, move a camera so you guys can see. I apologize for you seeing my ugly feet. Oh my God, this camera thing moves. I thought I locked it in place. All right, let me try and see if I can, can I get this? Any, that's not that camera. Well, that's not really showing you much, is it? That's my, what I'm using down there. I'll tell you what, let me quickly move the camera. Got too much stuff in the way. Should just put guitars down, shouldn't I really? Because I'm just gonna smash stuff up. Oh no, it's all going wrong. <laughs> Got too much stuff in the way. Right, if we go over this way, I bought all these extra cables so I can do this kind of thing. So let's take advantage of them. Oh, bring this amp out of the way. Let me bring a light over. So you guys can see. There we go. So if you're interested in how I do my YouTube videos, there's a lot of this <laughs> moving around stuff. Right, there's that. And a lot of breaking HDMI cables because of doing this kind of thing. There we go. You can see my uh, lovely slippers here. I'm sure I'll move out the shot. But there is, there's my, uh, so. There we go. Let me uh, get a guitar back, otherwise I'm not much used to you guys. You don't just hear me talk rubbish all day, do you? Maybe you do. So, yeah, as um, Eric was saying, the beat buddy. So let me, why's the camera move? I wonder if I can get an angle where, my beautiful foot. So cool. So, hold on. Let me get myself sorted out. So this is awesome if you're practicing, so. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't used to, uh, I wasn't ready for the, I've got it on rock two, I had on rock setting one, so the massive drum fill freaked me out. But yeah, that's, I don't know why I set up that whole thing, but at least you got to see. That's what I am using on the floor, and I highly recommend getting one of those beat buddies if you, they're, they're not cheap, but uh, my God, for practice, it's great, absolutely awesome. Yeah, so actually, I don't know, let me see if I can show you. I've actually got a, let me change to, if I zoom out, yeah, <laughs> spectrums all over the floor. I actually use the singular sound uh, loop pedal as well. Let me turn it on. I'd ha if I wanted to show you, I'd have to, um, oh no, I haven't got it all plugged in. But yeah, I've got that connect, I know it's plugged in. So when I turn the beat buddy on, and if I get this all connected up to my computer, it syncs up with it, 
and I can record uh, some rhythm stuff along with it. I tell you what, maybe we can get it set up. Um, if you bear with me, I actually no, I'll, do, I'll do that on another live stream because that's going to take some time. But um, I tell you what, that could be another live stream I can do uh, next week. But that's what I'm using at the moment. That's a whole video in itself, really. Um, what are we saying? Got the strat. So we're doing the brown sound, wasn't we? The brown tone. Uh, beat by seem worth. Yeah, cool. Okay, we we're trying to do the reverb next, wasn't I? So let's go to the reverb setting. I do love personally uh, spring reverb, like that's from many years of uh, playing a Fender amp. Oh no, she's back. Has she got underwear on? <laughs> She's going to change camera angles. My, my daughter's half naked. I'm flashing. Right. So, uh, no, it's fine. What, uh, what was he doing? The reverb. This is why I struggle to do uh, <laughs> any videos these days. It's hard work. Right, as I was saying, I do love Daddy spring come. reverb. Daddy That's quite a lot of reverb on there. Abby! Oh, God. Usually she's quite entertained by just changing all the knobs on my amp, so then I turn them on and get a really cool dialed in tone. So that's how you do it. You have kids and they're, they're so dialing the tone wrong. for you. Nothing's wrong. I just. Can you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we usually give her um, the iPad like, when we're just knackered, but trying to avoid doing it at the moment because she needs like uh, stimulation, doesn't she? In terms of not just sh shoving uh, YouTube kids in front of her. Anyway, I'm going off on the tangent. What are we on reverb? <laughs> For me, that's pretty sick. <laughs> I try and get all the settings that I enjoy. Oh, actually, if we have a little listen to the, pre the presence, I'd probably go for a 50%, 50. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much reverb. Reverb? My tester with tone, like, is can I do legato on it, really? Oh, sorry, I've turned off the... Oh, just... I do love the sound. I know a lot of people kind of don't like um, that... the spring reverb sound, but I love it. <laughs> to be fair... Um, Boss have done it really well for this digital lamp. Um, what are you guys saying? Uh, tough time of day to pack the house, but nice to have the personal attention. I feel like it's... No, no, don't be silly, Eric. To be honest with you, I've, I've been away for a long time and I think that the algorithm just hates me now. So um, I'm gonna have to basically build my, my YouTube channel back up from scratch. So. I've decided that I'm going to look after my subscribers that still turn up like this. So it's nice to kind of have a smaller amount of people. I remember I used to do live streams and be like, oh, play 100 riffs. I was like, uh, I'm getting older now. I kind of want to do more technical things and dialing amps and 
I change directions, you know, I don't want to always be known as a cover guy. It's not that I don't want to be known for me personally. Anyway, I'm going off on another tangent, but uh, yeah, ask as many questions as you want, Eric. That's not an issue, man. Tough time there. What SEMA Duncan Bridge pickup are you using? Um, I don't know, actually. So we have a quick look. I don't know if it's on... Because this is just the stock pickup. So this is Shergold Guitars. Uh, this is SMO2, I believe. Uh, I wonder if they have it on their site. What particular one it is. Specifications. No, it doesn't say. <laughs> Pickups. It's on PMT website. Let's go on to the actual. Um, let me just show you the screen that I'm looking at. Um, actually, it doesn't make much sense. I'm be bored while I'm searching for stuff. Share gold guitars. Da -da. Masquerade. Oh, the P90s look really nice. There's a. I was I was gonna get the P90s, but I decided to go for um, SMO2. So there is the SMO2. What we got? Does it tell you on here as well? Electronic, oh, it's a weird electronics. Okay, so it's a, a USA Seymour Duncan, sing, that's not it. Bridge is US, uh, a Seymour Duncan TB4. And I love it. I know that some were saying the other day it sounds quite muddy. So it's a Seymour Duncan TB4. Let's have a look. Uh, C B four. But I do love the sound of this pickup. There we go, you can get it from GAC for 119 squids. But that's the one there for you, my friend. Uh hold on, I need to see see your questions here. But that's the pickup anyway. Oh, I've got, uh, okay, let me just catch up with the questions here. What Seymour Duncan pickup are you using? ACDC! <laughs> I can't remember anything anymore. <laughs> if you ask me to do some shred, I'll do that. Love the cameo from your special guest. Happy Father's Day. Oh, crap, yes. Yeah, no, it's tomorrow, isn't it? D don't give me a heart attack, Eric. Jesus. It's funny because... My dad's like, what are you doing? And obviously I, I think about my dad, but now I'm a dad with two daughters. And it's like, ah, oh. but my wife doesn't celebrate or well, her family don't really recognize Mother's and Father's Day as they see it as being a ploy to make more money, which it essentially is. And I kind of don't want my kids to feel pressured to do birthdays and, and Mother's and Father's Day. But it, it, one thing personally I would like, I wouldn't want them to be pressured into getting me a present and things. Just acknowledge that you appreciate me would be nice. But I know a lot of kids feel pressured to get their parents ridiculously expensive presents. And I think if you've got to spend money to show you really care about someone, then... There's something not right there for me anyway i, I know my, like some of my family members think differently but thank you eric that's really kind of you um another album yes do you know what i've got a song uh recorded and i've had it recorded for about nine months so i decided against doing another album with a singer and things because singers are ass wipes aren't they <laughs> Let's face it, like every singer I work with, like even Louis, I loved him to bits, but I think most singers I've worked with, they're just in another place. Like for me as a guitarist, like I work fast and singers are, most singers I've worked with, like they are set on their own thing. And if you're not on that same wavelength, then it's really hard to make an album. And it, the last one I did, Living on a Knife Edge, that was so much work. Like I still really appreciate all the work that, uh, Louis put in but it was it was hard and it put me off 
that's why I haven't released any original music since then. But I've changed my mindset. I'm going to release some instrumental music from now on. I want on two words for Father's Day. That's some real thanks, Dad. Yeah, I agree. Completely agree with that. A long-winded answer. Yes, I, ha I have got some new music coming soon, which I'm excited about. I've just got to get motivated to do it. Because the thing is, I, I do everything myself. So in terms of like, ugh, I was like, do I want to do a music video? The way things are with the algorithm, like I, it'd probably fall flat on its ass in terms of views and things. And since having kids and slowing down doing the YouTube thing, I, I just don't care about getting all the views and stuff because it was really stressful and my mental health was, was terrible. Um, and it was really hard at first because I, I couldn't actually do any YouTube stuff. So I just kind of got depressed and thought, oh, but now I've got these beautiful kids here. Enjoy them. That's real life. But anyway, a bit deep. <laughs> I blame you, Eric. Damn you. <laughs> okay, so back to this. Uh, so 50% presence or... I think that's sounding pretty good. Maybe that... Like, I, I, I suppose, like, on a Fender amp, even cranked to, what, uh, nine o'clock, you'd have a shed load of um, reverb, wouldn't you? So maybe about 15. And try Brian Maytone. Yeah, give that a go. Call the algorithm algorithms. I like it. That's awesome. <laughs> Is this the kind of thing you're looking for, Josh, by the way? Because to me, this is a good brown tone. Uh, for me, it's something you can really dig into and get some riffage, but it's great for lead, as I was saying earlier. And obviously, what I can do is we get a little bit of reverb just to add some ambience. But I want to put some delay so you can turn it on and off for that, those lead parts. And maybe we'll put a, a bit of boost in there for some lead parts as well. So let's do the delay next. Let me save it. So let's call this brown tone. Josh, there you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So, what we got? Delay. What are we going to go for? Right, digital. That's too much, man. Too much. For I don't like the delay to be in your face. I really love the delay. I think I've said this if you've joined me on another live stream. I love um, the uh, delay settings that you get on the Saldano Slay 100 Neural DSP plugin. So I turn off all the amps and everything. And when I'm sending uh, the signal from my tube amp to the uh, interface, I will have add the re th that delay on later. It sounds epic. <laughs> To me, that's pretty good. I <laughs> love it, man. Which guitar fun, man? Still got 
our work for that legato, so we need something to push that, but we'll work on that in a bit. <laughs> Let me tune this guitar. This is my best guitar to stay in tune. You're letting me down. Don't let me down. <laughs> what gauge strings do you guys use? I'm going through a bit of a crisis in my life. I don't know whether I like nines or tens. <laughs> I kind of um, been watching some players in terms of the shred stuff and uh, I love the way strings look when you've got nines on. You can get some really great vibrato. It looks cool. The thing is obviously a lot of the stuff I do, I have, I'm, I'm promoting myself and I've got to make Instagram videos. And it's A lot of it is image and how cool the guitar looks and the strings. So it's kind of a balance of what I enjoy and finding what looks cool. 8.5. Wow. Is that the Ernie Ball ones? They're the ones that they released recently. To see what now, let's see. Track. Yeah, to, to be honest, the way that I do it personally is I'll get a good, like, bait. I turn off all the effects and I will do the equalizer first and then sort out the game where I kind of want it at and then start adding in the reverb delay. And you can kind of go back and then what I'll do is I'll turn off the uh, delay and reverb. Uh, I probably should have done that. Probably should have done the booster, but there's no harm doing it afterwards. There's no set way to do anything, is there? Really, as long as you get the tone you desire. I have little fingers that get achy easily. I have a good day. I can't pronounce your name. Guitar shredder. Yes, seven two nine. I got it. I'm not as old as I thought. <laughs> nine eleven sixteen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I think that delay sounds pretty good. <laughs> to me, that's a pretty good brown tone. You probably could maybe push the gain a little bit. Let's go 45. <laughs> It is quite cool, isn't it? The fact that you can roll off the guitar. Some digital stuff sounds terrible. That isn't it? That's cool. Right, uh, let's go for what we got modulation booster, or do we? Ah, oh, we've got to put a tube screen around, haven't we? Really? So, okay, so let's. Hey man, crispy tone! <laughs> Muddy though, isn't it? Maybe like back off that gain. This is what I was saying before is like too much gain, it gets muddy and it's like you lose definition. And my. my... Yes, yeah, we could do. When would you use a compressor? Uh, some players you have a compressor on all the time. So I've actually, as, as I was saying earlier, I've bought a, a Tube Street Screamer. I think um, Stevie Ray Vaughan has two on at a time <laughs> from what the research I found. But um, I like to use compression to get really nice uh, uh, clean tones, like um, kind of funky kind of stuff. But you can use it whenever you want, to be honest. It's up to you. Some people kind of use it as like a booster. Um, in terms of 
I assume you're talking in terms of here. Like I would either choose a booster or a compression. Let's see what the, what what happens with doing either. Because that sounds good. Like <laughs> this is my new way of judging good sounds. If I can get legato out of it. Pretty cool sounding, man. It's a good idea, Josh. <laughs> okay, so what are we saying? Let's uh, uh, modulation. So we can put on a compressor instead. So, like a lot of players, um, Paul Gilbert. I was watching, yeah, blues drive. Use the blues drive is awesome. So I, I went to. What I'm going to do is when I get the um, tube scream, I want to compare the sound of the uh, blues driver and the uh, tube scream up with uh, both of my amps. Well, so I'm going to try it with the Griffin amp I've got. So I try it with the Griffin amp. The issue is with not an issue, but with these two amps, I don't have any clean channels. But obviously. Well, not obviously for me, after I had Mike Bradley on, in my studio, I was like, ah, just roll back and get a nice clean tone. And obviously, when you push your amp with um, a blues driver or tube screamer, you can get some really nice, clear kind of sounds. Um, or you could use a, a fuzz pedal and uh, back off there. But I'm going to do that and then the uh, uh, do it with the uh, Fender I've got. It's really good seeing a test experiment because I get overwhelmed as the beginning of all the dials. Oh, um, don't, yeah, oh no. I, I, do you know what? I forget. I always try and remember um, when I do my books and my lessons and things, remember what it was like when you first started. Because even the little things, I think you forget as, as you evolve as a player, you forget how much things daunt people. But never be daunted and always ask questions if you, you meet someone who's a. Uh, who knows a little bit more and don't be afraid to ask the questions. But yeah, that was how I would approach it. I would do the equalizer first and the gain and then start adding your effects afterwards and uh, hear the frequencies you want to hear. It depends if you kind of got like a, a single coil that's quite trebly kind of sound like on your strat, you kind of want to back off the treble on the middle. But because this humbuck is quite warm with the pickup, I can kind of, I can, push the middle and the treble a little bit more. Um, so the compressor. That's what I want. I want to hear that, that um, Rick Graham kind of thing. And a compressor kind of can bring that out, that uh, attack, and it kind of uh, brings that, uh, it equalizes all the sounds from what I understand. And uh, what's this? So we can do fat. It's been a while since I've messed around with this, the different setting. <laughs> pretty good so what do you guys think do you think compressor or do you think 
um, we add a booster. I quite like the compress the decomp. It's quite good. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I will we'll leave that at that. That's cool. Let's save that. And Josh, in terms of um, now you've seen the way that I do it, don't be afraid, obviously, to... I would, as I said earlier, crank that volume when you get it and save it and then mess around with your uh, volume here, your master volume. I've heard that you should crank this one here all the way to 100 but it's just to do with me connecting to my computer and it peaking i don't want you guys to get rid ridiculously high <laughs> guitar sound um so let's let's save that um let me write that somewhere else i tell you what can i export that how do i do it i think i've got so many presets i've made uh create live preset um, what do we call this? <laughs> Let's just say live YouTube session. Let's put some pretty cool. Let's put fire. Yes. I can upload your own images. It's been a while since I've used this. Okay. So let's put that over there just in case I delete it <laughs> by accident. Let's export that now. Uh, Oh, hold on. Just in case I'm messing something up. You gotta keep that TSL on you. Um what we're we doing? Brown tone Josh. So I will put a link to it underneath the video once it's done, once we've done the live scream, stream 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 <laughs> stream. Why right, didn't you say that? I've got so much crap on my computer. Need to have a good clear out. Okay, so that one's Done and exported if I do something stupid and delete it. So that's exported. Cool. Um, so Eric would say, I really like the sustain of compressors, smooth dynamics of my playing. Yes. That's the thing, I do like that, especially my legato stuff. <laughs> It's kind of, it, 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 you could probably add a bit more compression to that. I'm having to work hard to get uh, my licks to sound good, but I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Like I always used to think that uh, the more gain and I've got to work less hard, that means your, your technique's not good and you've got to work on your right hand and left hand. I really like sustain of compressors. Yeah, I've already read that. <laughs> I'm ready, reading things again. Right, so. I wouldn't even know where to start though. Maybe like I'll try and do that. I'll tell you what, Josh, I'll do that in another live stream, the Brian May, and maybe I'll get um, some reference points to uh, do that. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'll export these uh, clean overdrive, talk the funk and octave ones, and I'll put those in that folder and I'll put a link underneath. Um, I'm gonna end the live stream now just cause I'm going to go spend a bit of time with the family today and I will try and get back tomorrow with that other video I was talking about. But uh, have a good day, guys. Have a good Saturday. And thanks for checking out. I'm going to try and do some more regular live streams. If you've got any ideas of things I can do in the studio, I don't know, maybe you want me to dial in on another amp again or you want me to test out some pedals I have. Um, we can do that live where you can ask me any questions and things. Or maybe you've got some questions on technique. I was thinking of maybe doing some live lessons because I've got some um, software now that I can put on screen. And let's say you want to learn about a uh, free note per string or cage stuff. I'm happy to do that live. Anyway, I'm waffling on. Have a great day, uh, good weekend, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow, if not on Monday. Yes. <laughs>